Okay, so before we even start, let me just say this. I got a whole lot of stuff. I got a lot of stuff. I have cameras, lenses, flashes, batteries. I have backups. I have backup for my backups. Um, got a lot of stuff. It requires all of these necessary tools to photograph a wedding or a destination wedding um, at the at the level that I do. So this video is probably gonna be long, I'm gonna be honest with you. It might be one that you might need to grab some popcorn and a drink, but sit down, get comfortable, and let's get into it. What's in my camera bag for 2023? All right, so the first thing that we're gonna start off with is this JJC card holder that I got off Amazon. I really like it because as you can see, when I'm holding it upside down, the cards are not falling out. and the quality of it is nice, it's sturdy, well built. It's not really too much to say about it, but um, other than it holds a number of cards and it is very reliable. I've been using it for about a year and a half. I really like this one. I'm gonna leave everything that I discuss in the description box below, this being one of the first things that I think every photographer should have for safekeeping of your cards. Obviously, your cards are very important, all the memories on there. This is a great case. I like these cards because they're very durable. You know, you can you can drop them. I wouldn't advise it, but <laughs> they aren't cheap and flimsy. They have some kind of, you know, some sturdiness to them and they're really good options. So those are the ones I use. All right, and now we have the Sony A1. And for the most part, for all of 2022, this has been my workhorse, it's my go-to. It was my main camera. Um, there's not really much bad that I can say about it. Honestly, I don't think the value of it is what it was when it first came out. Even when it first came out, super expensive, very expensive camera. There's other cameras that I would highly recommend over this camera, especially depending on what you do. But for the mass majority of us, this camera is kind of overkill. But if you do more than just wedding photography and you do a lot of video, uh, if you do a lot of fast action sports, then maybe you look into this camera. But for just weddings, there's other cameras I would recommend. But yeah, this is a very expensive camera and it's for a reason. And this is my second camera for 2023. Let's get into the number one camera that I'll be using for 2023. And here it is, the Sony a7R5. This will be the camera that I will have on me for weddings as my main camera for engagement shoots is my main camera for events and portraits. This is it. Uh, I love this camera for a number of different reasons. The one being, I feel like this is a better value than the A1. For everything that you get out of the A1, you get a lot of that packed into this A7R5. And alongside the amazing autofocus in this camera and the image stabilization, if you do any video, uh, this camera is a really good deal, especially for the price. And so number one camera for 2023 is the Sony a7R V. So what we have here, a lot of people call this the holy trinity of lenses. You have your ultra wide zoom, you have your medium zoom, and you have your telephoto zoom. Now for the most part, I use these lenses in a bunch of different scenarios throughout a wedding. And they're all pretty different for the most part. Uh, you may see some overlap in some areas of when to use them or how to use them, but for the most part, they're different. First, let's start with the 16 to 35. And this is a great lens. I have a review on this lens on the channel, so make sure you check it out. But this lens, even though it's an F4, you can get a lot of creative shots with this lens. You can get those wide architecture shots, such as the reception space or the ceremony. I like using this lens throughout a wedding day for different scenarios. Again, make sure you check out the review of this lens uh, on my channel. And now we have the 24 to 70 G Master lens. Now let me tell you about this lens. This lens can do it all. If you just need one lens to walk around with, it's the 24 to 70. If you need a lens for a wedding day, uh, minus the portraits, because I'll get into like my portrait lens selection. But for events and capturing moments, this is a great option for you. It's wide at 24, it goes into 70. There's cheaper options than this G Master lens, but the weight is not there with this lens, but the image quality is. And one of the things that I really love about it is sometimes when I'm shooting with this lens, although it's not a 1.8, it only goes to 2.8, so you're not getting that true portrait look, 
sometimes I forget all about that because of how versatile this lens is. Um, to be able to zoom in 24, 35, 50, 70, all of those ranges all at once, it makes it a no brainer and it makes my job a lot easier. So I do highly recommend the 24 to 70. If you're on a budget, the 24 to 70 I recommend, or at least the equivalent is the 28 to 75 from Tamron. It's significantly cheaper. Um, it still gives you, you know, some wide range of, of versatility. But for me and for what I do, uh, shooting a lot of corporate events and weddings, I need it probably the best and this is it. So there you have it. The 70 to 200 lens is a wonderful lens. It really is. It gets the job done if you need the extra reach. Now it is or can be seen as a specialty lens because I don't believe everyone needs this lens on a wedding day. You don't. Um, I do believe you may run into scenarios where you could need this lens, but uh, consistently, it really depends on style. It really depends on kind of how you how you shoot a wedding. Uh, for me, I need this lens. I'm gonna be honest. I need this lens because I love those tight shots. I love getting moments where this lens is kind of like a sniper lens, where I'm not in people's space, where they get a chance to enjoy the moment, and I could just shoot through people and shoot and be out the way, almost like a fly on a wall. This is it. It gives you all the reach you would need at 200. And when you're taking shots at 200, even though it's a 2.8, it gives you the compression, it gives you the depth of feel, and it gives you a beautiful portrait look. But then there's also the Tamron 70 to 180, which I used to own. I do highly recommend. It is a budget alternative um, and it still gives beautiful image quality. Highly recommend that lens. So those three lenses there, again, the Trinity, you got the 16 to 35, 24 to 70, and the 70 to 200. Now, here's the thing. I do love shooting prime, but it really just depends on what's the best lens for each scenario for wedding. Now I'm gonna get into my prime lenses and I'm gonna kind of go over why I use them and when I use them, and if I'll use them over one of the zoom lenses. The first I'll talk about is the 55. Now this lens here, I love the image quality and sharpness that comes out of this lens. It's a great lens, it's extremely sharp, beautiful image quality. Um, as you can see, it's very small and portable. I love this lens. I actually love it and I've taken some of my best photos with this lens here. The one thing I will say about it is it might be an acquired taste. Uh, some people love the look of the 35, which is a little wider. Some people may like the 85, which is a dedicated, like for real, for real portrait lens but this here kind of sits in the middle and that's why i like it so much because it includes some elements of the 35 where you see some of the environment but it also has uh, a portrait look uh like a almost like an 85 not as much compression but it's good enough so that's why i like this lens i primarily save this for first looks as well as the portrait session with the bride and groom because i love the versatility of you know pretty much everything that it brings and now we have the 85 millimeter. Now the thing about this lens is, you know, I think it really works exceptionally well if you have a 35 prime and you put that on one camera and then you also have the 85, put that on another. Those two focal lengths are pretty much like a match made in heaven. But also if you had the 24 to 70 on one camera and you had the 85 on another, it just works, it does, because this gives you that portrait look. It gives you the look that you want where the background separation is there, the compression is there, and it's small and it's light. To have both of those in conjunction working well together, that's pretty much how I shoot a lot of my weddings. So now what I have here is pretty much the setup that I use for capturing candid moments, but I really wanna highlight this flash here. So this is the Profoto A1. Now the thing with this is it is very durable. I love the build quality of it. It produces very nice, even soft light. It has this magnetic dome, which is wonderful because it, uh, it kind of spreads the light very well. There's not much I can say bad about this flash other than the price, which is the case with a lot of my equipment. The price, this is a very expensive flash. Would I do it again? Probably not, probably wouldn't buy it again. If it ends up malfunctioning or breaking, probably go to Godox V1S route, to be honest with you, because it's a very comparable flash. It's not as fast in terms of the recycle time. Like if I was holding my shutter button down to capture moments, the V1S, which I used to own, is not as fast as the A1X from Profoto. However, 
that Godox can get the job done. The Pro Photo though, again, I love it. It doesn't feel like it'll break when I drop it. The Godox is, you know, it's a little flimsier, um, but I, I do, I do really like it though. I do really like it. I just wouldn't recommend it just because of the price, but you know, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. So now what we have here are some pretty top of the line lighting and flash photography gear. Uh, the first thing I'll go over is this Stella Pro Reflex S, which is a continuous light as well as an off camera strobe. Now, one of the dope things about this, honestly, it's not just the build quality. It's not just the versatility to put this on a light stand um, and use this as continuous light, um, but just how powerful it is. This is nowhere near how bright this, this thing gets. It can literally light up an entire situation. And I love to use this when my team and I, when we're just doing video and bringing this to the hotel room where the bride is getting dressed and using this to kind of light the room. Um, or if we need to light the dance floor and bring some very nice quality light uh, for our cameras to really do their thing. Um, this Stella Pro is a great option and yeah i got it for a good deal during a uh, black history month no um black friday that's when i got it black friday so yeah now we have the pro photo b10 um this is not used that much during a wedding i'm gonna be honest with you um i love it because it is small and it packs a punch uh for most weddings i don't need it but you never know when you'll need it, so I always have to have it with me. And if I'm in a scenario where the ceremony is a very large space and there are uh, group photos that we have to take and the lighting is just very bad and the ceilings are extremely high, then I have my umbrella and I'm just plopping that in here and I'm using the Pro Photo B10. It does come with me, uh, but I may not use it in every scenario. It just really depends, but you can't like leave home without it. Um, if the ceremony space is large. All right, so now we're about to get into these accessories, and here's the thing. Accessories are not like the most intriguing to a lot of people, you know, little odds and ends and things like that, but they really do make your job a lot easier, especially on a wedding day, and I can't, you know, speak highly enough about these, these next couple things, because sure, you need a camera, sure, you need lenses, but you also need the things, again, that makes the, the day flow and less stressful. So I do have this satchel. Um, now this is an expensive one. It's a designer brand satchel, but it, it pretty much works with my brand and who I am. You know, people spend a lot of money on me to shoot their wedding. I'm being uh, flown out. I'm shooting, you know, kind of some high-end weddings. I'm shooting, you know, some weddings where people spend thousands and thousands of dollars just on the damn napkins <laughs> and decor and cutlery and things of that nature. So. I wanna make sure that I'm adding to that experience and I want my couples to have a luxury and nice experience. And honestly, I like nice things. So, you know, yeah. With this Dior satchel that I have, I pretty much wear it and I store my batteries in here. Sometimes I'm charging my phone. I, ha I usually have this kind of slung over my shoulder uh, and I'm using it primarily during a reception. Um, to keep things in one place and easily accessible if I need to swap out a battery or you know any of those things. Um, this is where it's at. All right, so before I get into the accessories, please make sure you like and subscribe to the video. This video was long as hell. It, it took a lot to get all of these things and talk about them. So if you are one of the few who have stayed up until this point, man, like, share, comment, something. It's like something because I am extremely exhausted. Now, back to the video. So, some of the accessories that I like to use, that I have to use, that are must needs for me on a wedding day, gotta have the dual battery charger. Gotta have the dual battery charger, and then that goes right inside of the satchel. It goes right inside the satchel, and oftentimes, it really just depends, but I can use this battery pack right here which I really do like because it's slim, it's sleek, it's nice, it has virtually no weight to it, that goes inside as well. And I'm charging the batteries at the same time while they're in the satchel. Like the battery pack and the dual battery charger is all in here and they're charging. But I can also charge my phone up while it's on me during a wedding day. I like to throw some batteries 
inside of the satchel. Just some extra batteries that I can grab. This last thing here, I have these cleaning swabs and this sensor cleaner is extremely important to have in your bag, you know, at some point. One of the things I like to do is clean my, my sensors before the wedding day, just in case there's any dust or any specks or anything like that on my sensor. I don't want it to show up in the photos. I do keep it in my bag as well with this sensor cleaner right here. So all of those things pretty much go inside of here. Um, it's a nice look. I love it. It's stylish. It's sleek. Um, and it's cool. And that's pretty much my brand. That's who I am as a person. And it's like a utility belt, like like Batman or something. I don't know, but it's, it's pretty cool. I also have this battery pack here, uh, the Omni Charge battery pack. And man, game changer. If you're ever in need of an outlet, if you're ever in need of more items that need to be charged up, like I have flashes that need to be charged, or if you're doing off camera flash and the battery dies, you can just plug it into this device here and you're good to go. And one of the things I love about it is that I can also put my phone on top of it and get a phone charge uh, in dire situations. Sometimes I'm doing that during the reception. This is one of those things that I'm so glad I was able to purchase and that I truly have benefited from, especially for destination weddings. Um, you just never know what type of outlet you're gonna have um, when you're leaving the country. So yeah, this is definitely a game changer. So these are the last few items that I have. Uh, the first thing is we'll go over this, this backpack here. This is the Venta backpack, which is, uh, it was a company that was made in New York. They actually discontinued it. Um, yeah, I actually had this for about four years. Um, nice and sturdy, nice and sleek. I actually outgrew it um, because the compartments in here, and I'll show probably some B-roll, the compartments in here, they don't really hold a lot of the things that I uh, I have. And so I'm definitely gonna end up getting a larger bag. I'm looking at uh, a few options now, um, but I did love this bag and still do. It's just too small, especially for how much I've grown over the last four years. The other thing is I have this uh, kind of duffel handbag as well. And it kind of, it came with this, uh, this Venta backpack. So I kind of hold this when I have like some extra accessories or things that I need to put in. So I'm usually backpack and I'm, and I'm this most of the time. Okay, so the last thing that I will go over is the straps, the camera straps. Um, I really love them because for me, it's kind of like a signature look. I'm in all black. So I, I really like that all black professional sleek look and the straps pretty much kind of like the icing on top of that. I always get compliments and people always are looking like, wow, like look at this guy here, like with the straps, like he's really, he's really cool. Um, so, you know, get out of straps, man, get out of straps. I got them off Etsy. Just go to Etsy. You don't need to get the expensive ones. I, I, I know the expensive ones and those are cool. Don't get me wrong, but Etsy is the way to go for the straps. All right, so that's it. Um, I'm tired, I'm hungry. Thank you for still watching. Like, you know, if you are one of the few who are still watching this video, I really do appreciate it. I wanted to show you all all the gear and just getting all of this stuff together was a lot. Filming this was a lot and I'm pretty confident that editing this will be, will be a lot also. So I do appreciate y'all, man. Please like, comment, share, all that stuff. You know, if you are still watching, I think at this point you need to, you need to comment. Like, like you need to say, you know, I stayed. <laughs> like I've, I've, I've made it through. Like, please comment. I made it through because you are you a real one. I appreciate you. Other than that, see y'all later.